The Orange Zone, sponsored by Billy Whitaker Cars and Trucks and Apex Entertainment. Welcome into the Orange Zone podcast, everyone. We have Ashley Wenskowski, we have James Mungro, Rachel Culver on the producer mic, and I'm Samantha Cross. And thanks so much for joining us for another episode. We're coming to you as Syracuse is gearing up to face number 19, Pittsburgh. How are we feeling? I mean, I'm going to state the obvious. Who would have thought that uh, Pitt Syracuse would be one of the ACC games of the year? Wild. I thought that. Did no, you, you didn't. Uh, why wouldn't I think that? <laughs> Because, I'm Pitt, because Pitt wasn't good last year. It doesn't matter what we did last year. It's what we did this year. Ends. On both ends. Pitt was very bad last year. They certainly have been one of the biggest surprises, I think, in the whole conference. No, I, I would have to agree with that. They are a big surprise in that part of what they did um, from last year to this year. I mean, same thing what we did as well. I mean, we have a new coach and everything like that. And uh, I plan on going down there and uh, skin those Panthers. That's what yeah. I'm doing. Going down there Mongrel will be there. Mongrel will be yes, there. I will be, will be there. I Ashley will be wait. there. So we got some people on the ground for this one, yeah. which is a good feeling. Um, just for a little perspective, each squad taking the field for the first time since October 12th. Um, in the Week 9 AP Top 25 poll, SU received 15 votes, the second most amongst teams that are on the outside looking in. Mungro is unhappy with it. What, what do you think, Ash? Um, I, think, I think going into the bye week after they beat NC State, I, I pretty much knew that they were going to need to beat Pitt to get the national rank that I feel like they've been going out here for weeks. Um, I didn't think they would get it coming off the bye, honestly, although there were a lot of teams that were in the receiving votes category last week that lost, so that certainly helps their case. I think Syracuse is ranked if they come out of here with a win. Well, I 100% agree with that. Uh, they will be ranked after we get this W. Um, <laughs> He's so confident. I'm very confident in this game. Uh, I'm, you know, f uh, from Pennsylvania. Pitt's a big university in Pennsylvania, and, um, you know, uh, we're, I'm excited <coughs> to be there. I cannot wait to go there. Um, There's going to be a lot of fireworks. Uh, this is the opportunity now where Syracuse could show the whole nation what we're made of, and this is the prime opportunity, nationally televised game, ESPN 730. Um it's going to be a very hostile environment, and this is where you go in, and this is what this is what college football is about. I mean, this is what you dream about as a college athlete, and there's no better situation than just to go down there, beat that ass, and come home with a W. Yeah, that's I, a bar. <laughs> I don't think you can understate it. Fran Brown said it yesterday <laughs> in his press conference that this game being on Thursday night, while well, for both teams that are both coming off a of bye week, it makes your bye kind of like ten days instead of two weeks. But they're the only event on Thursday night, nationally televised, ESPN. There's going to be a lot of eyes on this game. This will be the 80th meeting of the two teams. SU's won 33 times, lost 43, and there have been three ties. They've met every season for the last 55 years. Um, and what's at stake here is this is the first time that Pitt has started a season 6-0 since 1982. So it really has been kind of unprecedented for them. And Syracuse hasn't defeated three ranked teams in a single season since 1998. So that's sort of the stage that has been set. I mean, I think it cannot be understated how not only good this Pitt Panthers team has been, but also how shocking their turnaround has been. Yeah, I also think the other shocking thing that I uncovered yesterday was that Syracuse has not won on the road at in Pittsburgh since 2001. Mm. I mean, that is a long time, folks. A really long time. You got to keep rubbing that in. A long time. <laughs> yeah. 2001. Sorry, sorry. I, no, know, no, I know, I know, I remember, know. I remember 2001. That was Whoa. my senior year, okay? Whoa. Dude, they, they have, things have fallen off since won. James Mungro Goodness. hasn't been on it's the you. team. It's you. It's you. Goodness missing. gracious. But no. you'll be there, so that's a good omen. Yes. Yes, it absolutely Absolutely is. And these are also two coaches that have a lot of respect for each other. Um, I think it's worth saying what Pat Narduzzi said in, I believe this is his press conference, right, Rachel? Yes. It, yeah. He said, if you're not a Pitt fan, if you're not a Syracuse fan, but you're a quarterback fan, you should get your tickets now because that guy's going in to play in the National Football League. Talking about Kyle McCord. Yes. Um, he will be the best quarterback that's walked in to play us in this stadium in a while. So we have a great chore ahead, ahead for us to defend him and a slew of really good receivers. I appreciate the fact that he said that because it also goes to show, right, this is an undefeated team, but they're not taking Syracuse lightly at all. Oh, they better not take us lightly. If they're out of their mind, they take us lightly because I'm telling you right now. What did you eat for breakfast today, I'm, 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 re I'm ready to go. I'm ready. To, I'm, I mean, the game, I mean, 730 game Games is, in two is, days. Is two days. I mean, I'm leaving Thursday morning. Uh, I got some teammates out there. I got a, one of my good friends flying in for the game. Uh, that is a Pitt, uh, Pittsburgh Panther with the school there. But uh, besides that, I mean, this is what you talk about with college football. I mean, there's no bigger stage than this right here. And all the goals that Syracuse want are right there in front of them. So right here it is, 730. Our goals are in reach. We get this W and then, you know, 
more things are going to happen for us, more positive things. Yeah, I think back to the Narduzzi quote, that's certainly some high praise, too. Uh, Drake May played there a season or two ago, so certainly really giving McCord some high praise. Is there some strategy behind that? I don't really know mm -hmm. in terms of the coach speak. Thought in about terms that. Of, I don't know, but uh, you, can't, you can't underestimate what Pat Narduzzi has done in Pittsburgh this year. I think Pitt was a team a lot of people counted out after last season, kind of one of the teams that I guess could fall in the category of maybe a Syracuse before Fran Brown of in the new era of college football, are they going to be kind of left out of that conversation? Pat Narduzzi and Fran Brown have both proven that that is not true this year for either of these two teams. So should be should be a great game. But you know what? If it is coach speak, then that's smart on Narduzzi's part. I do think truthfully and honestly yeah. that he has a lot of respect for Fran Brown and this entire Syracuse football team. Agreed. But I guarantee you that he's also seen in weeks past when someone does go after Fran Brown or Fran Brown even believes it to have appeared that way and the way that that all pans out. Um, so, so I appreciated what he said there. Ashley was actually at the Fran Brown press conference yesterday. What did you think or anything you heard that you thought was pertinent? Um, so on the injury notes, on the X's and O's, uh, Marlo Wax is not back this week, which is unfortunate. I think Pitt is kind of what we had been targeting with that six-week timeline. Uh, Fran Brown said he... Hopes he can be back next week. He thinks he will be. Uh, Marcellus Barnes, he said, is good to go, but they also felt like against NC State he maybe could have played too, and the coaching staff mm -hmm. liked Jaden Bellamy a little bit better for that role, so he made sure to clarify that Barnes is certainly going to have to uh, compete for his spot. Zeed Haynes is still not back with that family matter um, that we've been talking about for weeks. Fran Brown said as soon as he comes back, everybody's going to know I'm sending balloons. He's handling his family issues that he's taking care of. Everybody handles things differently, and we think this is best for Haynes. He also said he hopes to see him back this season. So truly to me with what we've gathered with the Zeed Haynes stuff, that seems to be something off the field. Mm -hmm. I don't think it involves football at all, and I think they're going to be happy the second they get him back. The other thing I wanted to point out from the press conference that I just thought was interesting is Fran Brown um, made sure to say that even though Pittsburgh is their most faced opponent in history, whatever, all the history with basketball and football and throughout all the sports, um, that he really sees every team as their rival. He says it's not like he's going in here looking at Pitt as Syracuse's specific rival. He's us against the world, man. Yeah. That's the mentality he I, I wouldn't say, you know, it's a rival. I mean, it, it's a big game. It's a, I mean, yeah. that's – I mean – that's how you look at it. I mean, it's a big game. This is a, a game where totally um, the tables could turn. And like, like we said, going into the, you know, the top 25, I think that's a really big thing for the university, uh, for, the, for the athletes as well. And let them go out there and earn it. And I, think, I feel that they're going to be able to out, go out there and earn that, uh, that W. And uh, there's a lot of different things that stick out to me that's going to be big key factors in the game. But uh, I think if, if you know, they keep their composure, they could definitely come out with a W. I don't think Syracuse really has a traditional rival after leaving the Big East. And this is something we can talk about another time. But the two protected ACC matchups with the expansion of the conference are Pitt and Boston mm -hmm. College. So Pitt, I guess, is as close as you get to Syracuse's rival, even though <laughs> what does that mean? I don't know. Fair enough. I think, listen, numbers aside, rankings aside, if they could go in there and beat them on the road for the first time since 2001, what would that mean to you as an alumni? Yeah, it's, it's, good. it's a good feeling to know that, you know, things have turned around and, you know, the, the kids believe in Fran Brown and the system, what they're doing there. Um, obviously, you know, with a 5-1 record, uh, you're right there in the, with, you know, one of the best uh, uh, records in the country with other schools. So, I mean, you're sitting right there on top. So, um, you know, Fran, the, 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 the coaching staff has the kids believing, the kids believing in, into the system, and it's, it's showing it by their, by their, uh, their record. I think it'll be interesting to see how this team reacts coming off a of bye week, too. In recent years, they have not been good off of bye weeks, Syracuse. Uh, we saw that earlier in the season as well. So hopefully they're ready to go. Um, another thing that he didn't say in his press conference, but he said it on his radio show last night, Fran Brown, uh, Trevor Pena is day-to-day -day questionable for this game. Uh, Syracuse's, obviously, receptions leader this season. Uh, says Fran Brown said it depends on how practice goes today, today being Tuesday. He took a hit to the head against NC State, and Brown also said in the radio show last night that his legs are killing him. So upper body, lower body, we don't know. But that would be a sizable loss if there's no mm -hmm. Trevor Pena, and I guess we'll just have to see. No doubt about it. Either way, whatever players they have, they are going up against a strong, tough pit team. Um, some of the things that Rachel pointed out, they're currently one of the – on one of the largest single season turnarounds in the country, already doubling their win total after going three and nine last season. Like that was the situation last season, three and nine. Um, they're averaging 40.8 points per game. It's highest scoring clip since the 2021 ACC champion Panthers averaged a school record 41.4. And Rachel, I think also has something to say here. Is this about this last bullet, Rach? 
Oh, um, the crowbars? Yes. Okay, so yeah, I just ran into an interesting headline um, along my research today, Mm -hmm. and it revolves around the tight ends on this team. Um, Pit tight ends were actually given crowbars this week. They were gifted crowbars. Um, The tight ends coach is intense early this season before a team spring game. He actually smashed a trash can over his f- head to fire up his team. Mm. I actually that sent sounds very smart. I sent I sent <laughs> Sam and Ashley this photo and I can pull it up actually for viewers to see on our end. <laughs> but um, it's just an interesting situation. <laughs> yeah. Um, but he literally gifted the team's crowbar, leaving them on their desk on Sunday. Senior tight end um, Gavin Bartholomew explained it was sis- symbolism for prying the D ends open. Oh Ooh. my! So this is an intense team. Like if you're if you're going that far for a little bit of symbolism, that's pretty that's pretty intense. Yeah, that's giving some Fran Brown energy. It is giving. a little bit. <laughs> I call the bluff. I call the bluff. Mo I, mean, I, mean, I call the bluff. That all that false enthusiasm, all that stuff. That's just go out there and play the game. You can get the crowbars, you can do all that silliness like that. Can but I it, ask you something, though? What's that? If Fran Brown were to do it, would you be fired that. up about it? <laughs> it, it? It's all for the, you know, that, to me, that's just nonsense. Um, well, yeah, of course I would be excited <laughs> about it. <laughs> Trying to get the obvious out of the way. Mugger's <laughs> a know, little biased. I, 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 know of that course I would be biased. Uh, I mean, <clears throat> listen, I mean, Pitt is, Pitt's a good, a good team. Pitt's a good team. I'm not going to take that away from it at all by no means. They, they work very hard to get to where they're at. But um, I feel like we have worked just as hard. And the coaching staff and the players have put the time in. Now it's time to get the results. Yeah, I think what's interesting about this matchup, uh, too, is that these teams are pretty evenly matched in terms of uh, on offense and on defense. Syracuse, I believe, uh, or Pitt, I should say, has the eighth best rated offense in the country. Syracuse, the 12th. Pitt has the 61st uh, best rated defense in the country. Syracuse, the 64th. So you can kind of see them living in the same in the same world there. Um, I also think it's interesting because Pat Narduzzi was a defense guy. Fran mm-hmm. Brown's a defense guy. Pat Narduzzi was a defensive coordinator before he went to Pitt at Michigan State. State. Uh, Brown said he watched his work there and described it as phenomenal. So both of these guys having defensive backgrounds I think is interesting because both of these offense can go. We know that. Uh, Syracuse obviously with Kyle McCord, Pitt with uh, freshman quarterback Eli Holstein who's done wonders there. It has the potential to be a shootout. I think Fran Brown and Pat Narduzzi with those backgrounds on defense and with defense being both of these teams concerned this year is going to have a focus on, on, on the defensive side of the ball. On limiting those points. Let's talk about Eli Holstein for a second here because he has been a large part of this bit turnaround. He has accounted for 18 total touchdowns and just under 2,000 yards of offense with 266 yards as a runner. He ranks sixth nationally in total offense, 13th in passing yards, and 15th in touchdown passes. He's also the first pit quarterback to win his initial six career starts since Dan Marino accomplished the feat over the 1979-80 seasons. So they are really seeing flashes of greatness that they have not seen in decades. And Holstein is a big part of that. And I think to Ashley's point, I'm happy that you brought up the the you know, parallels between these two teams because clearly even Vegas is anticipating this to be a shootout. The point spread has been set at 62 points. So yeah, there's going to have to be some sort of a focus on defense here because in my mind, it's it's a matter of two things. Which quarterback is going to play better and can can the defense on either of these teams make a big stop? Like, I think this could be one of those things where it comes down to that last field goal or that last touchdown. So it is, like, every play matters. And, you know, that's funny you said that because, you know, things – I mean, both quarterbacks are very, very similar. Um, but one key stat that stands out to me is 40% uh, third down conversion for Pittsburgh. Um, they're at 40%. You know, we're over 50%. So that's that's a credit to our, t- our team. Um and that's, I, mean, I think that's going to be the key. I mean, think, I mean, third down conversion on both sides of the ball for us, Syracuse, is going to be the key. Yeah, I think also Fran Brown's focus this week in practice certainly probably is the defensive backs because Pittsburgh and Pat Narduzzi, watching some of that tape and watching some of their games earlier this year, they're very comfortable with Holstein's arm, throwing the ball, shooting it downfield. I don't know if you want to call it Hail Marys, but throwing some of those big passes when they're in trouble, they like to do that. So Fran Brown and his defensive staff, I'm sure, have studied those matchups on defense this week. And, you know, with with saying that too as well, um, 
you know, Pitt, Pitt is, you know, 79% of the time they're going on first down, 79% um, passing uh, on first first down. Um, they're pretty, they're almost, they're almost equal. I mean, balance on, you know, first, first down, uh, passing, throwing. Uh, Syracuse, we're very lopsided. We're very lopsided in, in that aspect. And um, we throw the ball 114 times for first downs, and we only got like, what is it, uh, 38. So, I mean, defense, I mean, I think we're going to have to really, you know, the running game is going to be very big, very uh, big, uh, very important uh, to the W. I was just going to say that. I think this is a game where how LaQuint Allen fares maybe dictates this game. Yeah, it's like it's little edges, right, here yeah. and there. Um, two other players on Pittsburgh who I want to point out is running back Desmond Reed, who ranks second nationally in all-purpose yards with an average of 182.6 per game. Fran Brown did speak about him a little, saying, I think he's a complete running back, so that's why he's having success. I like what I see on the film from him. He's a really good football player. And then they also have wide receiver Konata Mumpfield, who leads the team in catches and receiving yards. Right, like it really, to me, is like, there's there's little little edges and advantages here and there for both of these teams. Obviously, Pitt playing at Pittsburgh, that's an edge. Their kicker, Ben Sauls, is an edge for Pittsburgh. Made 12 consecutive field goals dating back to last season, tying the school record. Special teams is an area that Syracuse has struggled with, right? All of the little things are going to make <laughs> the big things in this game. Penalties, penalties too. Sure, penalties be glitching when you say special teams. Yeah. Like, uh. <laughs> no, I, I mean, I think special teams is going to be a big factor in this game, like yeah. you said. It's going to be very um, – I feel uh, Pittsburgh is going to come after us a few times. Why not? I mean, <clears throat> uh, we just got to be stout enough to stand up and block the guys. Yes, and honestly, I, I bring up Ben Sauls too. Rachel put this down, and I think it is important to say this. Like, Ben Sauls could be – the difference in this game, quite honestly, because if he is as good as the numbers show, he provided the winning margin and pit 17 to 15 win over Cal with a 58 yarder, which also tied a pit record. Translation, this is not the kind of game that you're going to want to see come down to a field goal because it could be a problem. And for a Syracuse team that I don't know if you want to say, uh, well, they struggle on special teams. We can say that. You can but, say it. We, but clean, like, we cleaned it up over the, um, over the break. Sure. We, we cleaned it up. Sure. But the kicking situation is just a little unsure. Jaden O has been better uh, since he kind of took over for Brady Denenberg. But if you're Syracuse, to your point, you, you want to be finishing complete drives. You want to be getting touched. You don't want to be relying on the kicking game, especially when you know Pitt can beat you there. And I wonder if knowing that they have someone like Sauls and knowing the situation with Syracuse's special teams, like I just wonder behind the scenes how much that changes the strategy for a game like this one. Because yes, a lot of this is just going to be what happens on the field, and I know Mungro would probably say that. You just got to go out there and play. But I do think from a head coaching standpoint, there has to be some strategy to how you approach a game like this. Oh, you know, it definitely has to be some type of strategy. But, um, you know, you get in the red zone, obviously you want seven, not three. Um, we've been very good in the red zone, mm -hmm. so uh, I don't see no late down in that. I, I mean, our guys just got to tackle. I mean, we can't we can't let these guys just run around all crazy like that. And uh, tackle is going to be a, a big key throughout this whole game. Tackling. Yeah, something that's interesting that I want to point out. This is me being a hater for a second. Mongro's <laughs> going to love it. Actually, you're going to be on my side. Okay. Uh, not going to lie. I saw this on Twitter. Straight out of Cuse at Cuse Life for 15. Shout out. Um, Pitt is 6-0, and and that is you have to be good to be 6-0 and in college football. It isn't easy no matter who you face. But the 6-0, and let's go through it. So they beat Kent State. They beat Cincinnati. They came back in the fourth quarter to beat WVU, who's bad this year. They beat a bad FCS team in uh, their fourth game of the season. They beat a UNC team on their third-string quarterback. And last week, they escaped by the skin of their teeth against Cal because Cal missed a field goal in the final seconds. So I'm not taking away from that 6-0, but I am just saying. Aren't you? It's not <laughs> the same way that I'm, I am a little. The I mean, same, I mean we, did, we did kick a couple field goals at winning some games, too. No, 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 no. But I'm just saying the same way that Syracuse people are like, wow, Syracuse hasn't really had that. I mean, they beat two ranked teams, but that big time caliber show us the money win. I hesitate to say maybe Pitt hasn't either. I don't know. I mean, to, to, to have it all work out like that, to be 6-0, you have to be a good team. But let's not forget, Syracuse would be 6-0 right now if it weren't for 4th and 9 against Stanford. I was so, thinking that. And yeah. quite honestly, the numbers, I think, reflect that as far as even the betting lines. Like, DraftKings has Pitt as a 6-point favorite. FanDuel has Pitt as a 5-point, 5-point favorite. It's, no one is predicting this to be a blowout, even, yeah. even though they are in Pitt's house, you know? So I think that everyone kind of knows and understands that this is going to be a tight game. And you have to remember that. Like, yes, Syracuse isn't undefeated, but they 
absolutely could have been. Yeah. They could have been. Yeah, I'm almost surprised the line isn't a little closer. I mean, I, I know Pitt on the road, <clears throat> they have the advantage there, but I almost expected it to be a little tighter. I understand that. Well, at this point, let's do predictions since we're talking about it anyway. Um, so, yeah, now you know that. 62 points is the over-under, and, you know, depending on the betting site you're looking at, Pitt is the favorite, but not really by more than six points on most sites. Um, what do you guys think? And I'm just going to disclaimer this because I, I kind of should talk to you when you weren't here because I said that you're always coming at me yes. for my predictions. Um, there was talking behind your there, back. There was talking. <laughs> Sorry, I understand. But I understand. <laughs> but um, I wrote down my prediction ahead of time and did, and you did too, I right? Top, and James yes, did. did too. So I whatever know. we both say, just know that we both did it before and we're going to have a truce after either way. Um, Maybe. Ashley's going to go first. <laughs> All right, yeah, I just walked in with mine. It's in my brain. Uh, it's not written down. I think, so our predictions at the beginning of the season, we all both said that Pittsburgh was, or Syracuse was going to win this game. Um, we've both used our mulligan, so that's dead, so we can't switch. Um, I truly think that Syracuse is going to win this game. I think it's a tight game. I think um, I think it's closer than the, than the line, like I just said. I think Syracuse wins it 24 to 21. Okay, so I, I predict uh, 30 to 28. Okay, and like and we that. know that he said Syracuse is going to win. I just want to yeah, make sure. Yeah, with you, Syracuse with a W. I did 35 to 31. So we normally just are on the same wavelength. We, we genuinely are, are pretty close for the most part. Yeah, I see this as, as the kind of game that is tight the whole way through. I think no matter how much they're coaching up both of their defenses, these head coaches, it's just going to be a game where they're just running up points on both sides. And it's going to be a matter of one defense making a big stop. So I also said in the beginning of the season that Pitt would win this game. I think we all did because no one expected SC it to be quite game. like this. Um, so I'll go 35-31 Syracuse. Rachel. Um, I went 38-35 Syracuse. I like 38. That, that, yep. I would love it if Syracuse could put up 38 points. That sounds good to me. <laughs> <laughs> I like that too. Um, does anyone have anything else they would like to say before we wrap it up and get out of here? Any keys to the game or things that you think are going to be important this week? I'll leave the floor open. 7.30 at the new stadium. They, they changed the name. I don't care what the name of the stadium is. All, sure. all I know is that the orange will be in the house and we're going to be ready to rock it. Yeah, also a fun place to play too, right? It's an yes, NFL it stadium. Really, really great atmosphere mm -hmm. over there in Pittsburgh. Um, I already said it. I think the Syracuse key to the game is getting LaQuint Allen in that run game involved um, and, and making some big stops on defense like you pointed out. I think in the possible absence of Trevor Pena, look for Syracuse to rely a little more on guys like Umari Hatcher, um, some of those bigger downfield throws without, without maybe Trevor Pena. We'll see. And I think that anything that you can do to ensure that this game cannot come down to a field goal – you got to do what you can to try it. Um, thank you so much for joining us as always. We will be back again next week, no matter what the result is here, breaking it down and talking about it with you. Um, and you can find us anywhere. Just good time to say it. You can find us on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, any social media. Handles all the same at the Orange Zone Podcast. You can also just look us up on Google. I think sometimes people have a hard time looking us up. Simply look us up on Google, type in the Orange Zone Podcast YouTube, and you'll find us. Otherwise, we will see you back here SU. next week.